Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to our live stream here today. In this live stream, what we're going to be doing is just playing around with placing a horizon line, a vanishing point, and to see what that does to our little landscape sketch. I see that Cat is here, Phoenix is here, Happy New Year. Ace is here, Stacy Micheletto, thank you, Micheletto, not sure how to pronounce that one. Ileana, Happy New Year. All kinds of Melvin from Germany is here. Magana Sani, welcome to the live stream. Uh, so like I said, today we're going to be doing a little bit of landscape drawing, and it's just having some fun or a welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> I've uh, been doing the live classes for drawingtutorialsonline.com every um, Tuesday with a live model. So I've been seeing more of the members each week, and it's actually kind of fun. Uh, welcome, Nancy. Funky Donkey. Hello. That's a new one. I haven't seen that uh, username. I hope you're doing well. That's a really cool username. <laughs> Emily, welcome. Dana, welcome. Kat, how's... Um, Oh, God, I forgot the name of your koi. John? All right, cool. So as everyone's kind of strolling in, let me just talk about what we're going to do here today. And so I don't bore you all, all to death. I'm going, Happy New Year, Aurora. Um, I'm going to, um, you know, just get started here. So uh, we're going really uh, cheesy today. We're going to be using a really... Uh, high technical uh, drawing material. This is our um, Bic round stick pen. I don't know what the M stands for, uh, but welcome Zodiac, Emily, Stu. <laughs> Thank you, Funky. Uh, I can't say that uh, Lau Delgado from Brazil. Uh, you got it, Kat. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to say that the M stands for medium. All right. I don't know what that means, but we just kind of made that up. So what do we have here? Let's get started. OK, um, so I've created two little picture planes, two frames. They're a little bit more wide angle. Um, and I'm just working with this little pen here today. And so the point of today's lesson is the horizon line. OK, and where you place it, what does that do to the viewer's eye and what does that do um, uh, to your image, what type of emotion does it create? We'll talk about many other things as well, but let's put, let, let's create a high horizon line first. So maybe our first horizon line is going to be pretty up there. And maybe our second horizon line on this second image, that's going to be the same scene, but we'll do the same scene and we'll see what that does to how we feel about this image. So our second image, our horizon line is going to be a little bit lower. Okay, so immediately um, we have a whole different feel. So let's say with this one, our vanishing point is going to be off the image. And on this one, our vanishing point is going to be on the image. Okay, so let's play with that as well and see what that does. So first thing I'm going to do is just put in some horizon lines. Not, I'm sorry, some perspective lines, not horizon lines, Matt. And I'm going to pull those back. Okay, just kind of establish our landscape. Um, and now over here, we have our vanishing point on the image. So let's establish some lines over here. And it's a little different when that point is actually on the page. It, it feels different already. Okay, so now we can start to place things. Marie, welcome. Let me say hello to a couple. Uh, could we draw cats koi someday? We'll try that. Uh, Michael, welcome. Happy New Year. All right, so now let's put it, let, let's get some landscape stuff going over here. So maybe over here in our foreground, I just want to do one thing, one second. I'm, I'm sorry, we're off to a slow start, but I'm going to pick it up really quickly here. So maybe we're going to have some foliage here in the foreground. Okay, so let's just, let's just draw. Let's have some fun here. Um, put in some foliage. Let's come on down. And now we're going to have like a mid-ground over here going to our point. Maybe we have some foliage over here. Uh, we're not dealing with any shapes just yet. We'll get to shapes. Maybe we're going to have a little something over here. Maybe in the background, we're going to have a mountain range that's many, many miles away. Okay, that just looks like lines until we start to shade. What else could we put there? So maybe we're going to have this. Um, I like curves in my landscape. Maybe that's going to be our foreground. 
maybe this will be more of a um, mid-ground, far mid-ground element. Maybe we're going to have some of this cruising down. Maybe that's like a little valley down over there. Now, let's do the same thing with the lower one, okay? Sorabai, welcome. Aiden Sinclair, welcome. Sabi, welcome. Benedict, Lynn, uh, welcome. Hope you had a good new year. Uh, so now let's do the same thing. Let, let's take a little foliage over here. Let's have it going down in perspective, okay? And what does this do? How does this look um, placed in the horizon line much lower? Now let's add the same elements, okay? Let's add our little foliage in the mid-ground, going to our point. And we're going to talk about pen stroke direction and all that today. Um, so just hang in there with me. So we're going to do our mountain range in the background, very low to the horizon line, get our horizon line in there. Okay. So what we have here is we're seeing a whole lot more land. And you have to think about with your images when you're storyboarding, um, what can you finish the angel next time? <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. That was fun, actually. It's hanging on my wall over there. Um, to, to, in all honesty, in between this live stream and last live stream, I haven't really... Welcome, Barbara. Um, I haven't done too much art. I've been doing a lot of life things. Um, cleaning, preparing, uh, holidays, all of that stuff. Okay, so now... We have two different feelings. What Maybe what we're going to do here is we're going to have some big sky. So what uh, does this top land, how does that top landscape feel compared to this bottom landscape with all that big sky? So you have to think about the emotion. And also, um, if you have a character in the scene, would it be better for you to show more land with a high horizon line? Um, would it be better for you to show less land? Uh, maybe somebody's just looking out into the distance and you really want to show a lot of big sky. Abraham, welcome. Delta, Deltronia, welcome from the UK. Kardash, welcome. Helen, welcome. So now let's put in a little bit of um, value. So when we're shading now that far, far distant mountain, we want to not press down so hard. And we want to have horizontal pen strokes, okay? So horizontal pen strokes near our horizon line. And we want to go a little bit longer. We want to try to make a tad of a solid shape, okay? Now, what we're going to do here with this foliage, this little tree slash bush thing, is we're going to do a different pencil stroke. We're going to come on in and we're going to be um, blocking in a little bit of tone first. Let's just kind of get a bit of a solid tone. I'm sorry when I look to the left, somebody, um, um, we're expecting somebody to ring the doorbell. So Truffs is over there sleeping. And uh, Cupcake, Happy New Year. And so she's, Chuck, welcome. Um, she's going to go crazy when the doorbell rings. So maybe that's when we'll let her out of the office and that's when she'll say hi. So horizontal pen strokes in the background, vertical pen strokes in the foreground. Let me zoom in just a touch here at, at risk of kind of screwing everything up. Well, we're good, we're good. So let's keep going here. So now we're gonna have horizontal pen strokes in that mid-ground area. Maybe over here we have some um, grass. Okay, we're gonna do vertical, a little bit more foliage over here, vertical. And I'm not so much worrying about light source on this one. Um, let's do a little bit of a flowiness here. Okay. And let's extend out that foliage so it's not so uh, linear and so perfect. Um, I kind of like that so far as a beginning. Okay. Now let's come over here. Let's do the same thing with this other. And I notice I, I have a really empty sky. I didn't do anything yet with the horizon with the clouds in the sky we're going to save that and see what we can do to make that image a little bit more interesting so same thing now with our pen horizontal pen strokes in the distance now i'm doing as light of a pressure as i possibly can with this big pen okay that's not bad now we have not gone super dark yet i don't have my value scale out it's it's over to the right uh, we haven't gone dark yet i would consider this top landscape what i've done there all middle tone okay so um 
yeah, Truffs is doing good. Um, yeah. <laughs> With all the holiday sweets, absolutely. We went to my mom's house yesterday for a New Year's Eve dinner, and she made a ham. So when I brought over some leftovers and, and truffs, I didn't realize how much she likes ham. So we're doing our foliage right now. Uh, why am I only able to draw what I see, but I can't draw from my imagination? Well, I think the simple answer to that is we're good at what we spend most of our time doing. So if you're spending most of your time um, drawing from life, you, maybe you want to devote a little bit more time this 2020 to drawing a little bit more out of your imagination. And you just have to accept the fact that you're going to be doing some not so pretty drawings that aren't going to boost your ego so much. But I think it would be really, really good for you to um, take some time and just say, all right, maybe um, 15 minutes a day before I draw from life, I'm going to draw something out of my imagination, okay? And the only way to get better at doing something, uh, especially drawing out of your imagination, is just to devote time to doing it, okay? If you don't devote any time, you're never going to get better. And, and I've done that. I've devoted some time to doing some drawing out of my imagination, and I got to say, it hurt. I didn't really <laughs> like. Welcome, Julio. Happy New Year. I didn't like my drawings. Neil, Happy New Year. Um, Neil, what was that question in the drawing tutorials online, um, member area that you asked? And I said it would be a good, uh, one for me to answer during the zoom class. Frankie J. Welcome. Um, all right. So we have that established now. I'm a big believer in the philosophy that different things should have different values. Okay. So right now I'm really not getting too much of a sense of space because the ground is the same value as the sky. So I think it's, it's my job as the artist to show the viewer, hey, you know, we have a ground here and, and we have a sky and they're different values, okay? Um, same happens to me. Uh, so l let's start to put in some, maybe some intermediate tall grass. Okay, not too tall, we'll see. I was asking about how to choose which way to start a drawing. Now, uh, Neil, are you talking about a figure, portrait, landscape, scene? What specifically? Okay, so let's put in some tall grass over here in that foreground. We still have not established our darkest dark just yet. I'm going to come on in here and, and give a nice solid picture plane. So immediately with the bottom landscape, so you, you, you want to write down, um, and I say this all the time, and the reason why I repeat myself over and over and over again is simply because this is what I see, not only in my own artwork, but people's artwork in the critique gallery when they post up, uh, that they make the sky and the ground the same value, and the image just does not have enough depth when you do that, okay? So um, I like this better already. The bottom landscape is much, much more established than the top landscape. So do you see on this top landscape how the sky is the same value as the ground and we're not getting that much depth? Okay, so maybe what we can do here is texture. Yes, so tall grass here in our foreground. Um, Let's go a little bit more texture. So what you want to think about is uh, more German, welcome. Yeah, texture totally. Okay, so let's add some tall grass over here. And let's have some of the patches of tall grass uh, go in perspective. Now, what you want to think about is tall in the foreground. And as we start to meander all the way over to the mid-ground, our pen strokes are going to get a little bit shorter. Okay, so Neil writes, yeah, figure drawing. Some figures seem to work better with the envelope, some and some lines with angles or basic shapes. Problem is uh, trying all the methods, methods before finding the right one. Okay, so that's a great question. Neil is basically asking, how do you start a figure drawing? Okay, because I like to teach many, many different techniques. And so my very simple answer to you, Neil, and everybody else out there is the, the four-letter word time. The amount of time that you have to do the figure drawing will dictate, at least for me, how I start. 
Okay, so if I'm doing a two minute gesture drawing, I'm going to start with maybe continuous line and the opposite C's. If I'm doing a uh, two hour drawing, I'm gonna start maybe with a negative space and angles, okay? So it, it's, it's really about time. Uh, if I'm struggling with the pose, I might do that technique three shapes make up the pose. Okay, but for me, it's all about time, and that's what will determine how I start and what techniques that I do first. And there's also more of an aggressive approach with gesture drawing where I'll press down much harder earlier on in the um, drawing, and because it's only a two or three or a five minute pose, and I don't want it to be too light. And if I'm going to be working on like a two hour drawing, I might be a little bit more careful in the beginning. I might press down much, much lighter with my pencil. So my philosophy is this. If I'm doing a gesture drawing, that is my time to be more aggressive, to make mistakes and to press down harder on my pencil and take more of a top to bottom approach uh, and try to get the figure down from top to bottom very quickly. Um, it's a great way to practice getting proportions and, and all of that. Now, if I'm doing a two hour drawing, one hour drawing, I'm taking my time. I wanna have one area and, I, and for me, I'm a broken record. I always start with the torso first and then I start to go from there. So hopefully that answered your question. Okay, so um, let's, let's work on both of these at the same time. So I don't wanna have such a straight line over there with the bottom of that foliage. Just kind of playing around here. Um, let's add some tall grass. We want a little bit of overlap. And I'm gonna grab a little drink of water here. I am so thirsty today. It's probably because I ate at my mom's yesterday. And it was all the variety of foods and I picked out. So that's why I'm so thirsty today. I'm like completely dehydrated. I didn't drink enough fluids. Um, so you see what I'm doing here with this pen? It's a gradual buildup of the value. And uh, this is a lot of middle tone and nothing really is that aggressive. So I'm gonna come on in and I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive with maybe some foliage over here. So up and down pencil strokes, pen strokes I should say today, not pencil. Yeah, so if you, I, Neil, I don't know if you can join the Zoom class. Uh, this uh, year I'm doing a Zoom class for members of Drawing Tutorials Online uh, every Tuesday at 3. I don't know where you live, but Tuesday at 3 is a good time because people from Europe uh, can kind of join me at like 8.30, 9 p.m. And people on the East Coast can join me at 3 and the West Coast at 12 um, noon. So maybe you can join because we, we work with the model and we do uh, lots of different techniques when we're doing those classes. I'm gonna be teaching a lot. Uh, so January is gonna be all figure drawing, February is gonna be portrait drawing, and then we're gonna see where we go from there. Shine Girl, uh, Happy New Year to you. Too much pizza and pepperoni. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I did have pizza yesterday, so you're reading my mind. Not at my mom's, that was leftovers from uh, New Year's night. Okay, so food is, is a big topic for me and I need to put food on the back burner in my life because I love food so much and uh, it's time for me to get back <laughs> into shape in 2020, one of my goals. So one of my, I, I, I made a couple of very small goals. Uh, um, well, Wan Herma, Herma Wan. Hi, Matt, I thought you will stream next week. Happy New Year, by the way. Uh, last week I decided I needed to take a little time off from um, being in front of this computer. And so I, I, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to take time off, now is the time to take it during the holidays. Uh, let, let's just establish. So one of my small little goals is to, every time I go to pick up my iPad, because I'm on Instagram, YouTube all the time, Instead of looking at Instagram and YouTube, I'm actually going to try to read a book. <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I used to read a book almost and list or listen to an audio book uh, one a week. 
And I used to do that when I used to sit in my studio all day and paint. My lifestyle was very, very different when I was in my 20s. I just used to paint all day um, because I used to illustrate books and there was no internet and there was no computer uh, when I used to do that. So I used to listen to an audio book uh, at least once a week. It was so easy to do because I'd be painting eight hours a day. So now the thing that I do when I'm downstairs at night watching TV is I will... Um, just grab my iPad, scroll, 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 Instagram, Instagram, and I'm destroying my eyes. Uh, look at YouTube videos and all that jazz. So my, my small little goal that I've made up is to read a book instead of doing that. And I bought a book uh, the other day, and hopefully I could um, keep with that. Uh, uh, Stacy, on my website, uh, I have two really, I, I love Wyeth. He's one of my favorites. Uh, Wyeth, um, I, I did two Wyeth master classes, okay, one on his drawings and one on his paintings where I analyze um, several paintings and I analyze several drawings and uh, I just, it's something that you might want to check out. I, I will definitely touch on Wyeth in this free live stream here on YouTube. Just trying to be a little bit more aggressive now with this. Uh, I, I, in the past, I used to read a bunch of self-help stuff, uh, a lot of stuff with health, and I just got away from it. Yeah, I love Wyeth. Um, okay, so let's keep adding more tall grass. We want that tall grass to overlap. Yeah, it's... Um, so that... Anthony Robbins thing I shared with um, some of the members during our last uh, Zoom class very informally um, this whole program that I bought when I was younger, like I think I was 25, um, 25, over 25 years ago. And uh, it was this um, planning thing that he taught. It was this whole thing. I, I, I promise you I'll show it on, on the next Zoom class uh, one more time. It was rapid planning method. Uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome. RPM. So uh, Google that. Yeah, you got it, uh, Kubik. Okay, so more tall grass. Let's connect. I like doing these connecting things. So I'll connect over here. Maybe there's some darker tall grass in the foreground that immediately gives us a foreground. So our horizon line. So how are these feeling? They definitely feel different. I need to spend a little bit more time on this one. Okay, let's, um, so with the pen, it, it, it takes a little bit longer to add all these little pen strokes, but I was looking, cleaning up my office over the break, and I was looking at that little um, set of drawings that I did for you all when I was doing the value studies, and I really liked how that pen drawing looked the most. That was so cool. I, I love that. Uh, and so I, I, I said, I got to draw a little bit more in pen this, this year, and I wanted to do something fun and informal here on the live stream today since I haven't really been drawing. I didn't want to do a full-blown figure. YouTube hates figure drawing. Like they just, yeah, they don't like it at all. They, they keep taking my thumbnails uh, down that have anything figure drawing related. So um, that's why I chose the landscape today, just a little bit more informal. Uh, Maruf Khan. Yeah. Uh, fiction, I, not so much. I, I like watching fiction. I don't like reading fiction. Uh, I, I guess I'm more of like a practical reader. Like if I'm having a problem with something, I want to try to solve the problem. Uh, so if I'm having a problem with my health, I'll, I'll get like a book on health. So I just, the book that I bought, it's over there. It's beautiful, by the way. It's a, it's a good old fashioned hardcover. And I think it's called Regenerate and it's how to regenerate um, your body if you have like an illness. Uh, and so I barely read it. I read four pages the other night. I, I need to really uh, practice what I, what I preach and I need to read that book. It's, it's going to be, I got to admit, it's going to be a challenge uh, because I haven't read much in, in a while. So to sit down and to focus and read a book for me right now is like I'm an alien. It's crazy. Um, so the Zoom classes, uh, so this is free for non-members of Drawing Tutorials Online. The Zoom classes are for members, and I, I, I don't like turning the live stream into 
this promotional thing because that gets old really fast. And I don't want uh, the, the, the live streaming um, to be about promotion, promotion, promotion of the website. So if you want to read about my website, it's all the information is there in the show more part of this video. Just click below. And uh, I, I, I haven't really been, uh, I haven't added a lot of uh, the Zoom class stuff on my sales page. But yeah, every Tuesday, my commitment to members of drawingtutorialsonline.com is that every Tuesday, I'll be doing a live stream with a model, a live model, uh, because I've developed relationships with models uh, via the School of Visual Arts, and I'm trying to give them a little extra work in this stupid lockdown thing that we have. Um, yeah, before bed, absolutely. That's a great idea as well. So what you want to do with some of this foliage here, the tall grass in the foreground, is you want it to go to that vanishing point. So I want to have it perspective centric. Okay. So if I'm going to do this and I want to have some foliage over here, I want it to go to that perspective, but I, I, I don't want it to be overly straight. We want it to be uh, curved. So this is curved. Should try to curve this a little bit more now. Um, okay. Let me look at some of these comments. Uh, now, the cool thing with the sky, let's talk about the sky in the bottom image. I've been saving that. Thank you, all kinds of Melvin. Appreciate that. Uh, so what we can do with the sky is we can keep it simple and have a gradation, or we can also have our clouds uh, zigzag. Why did I just do an oval to our horizon line? And it doesn't need to go to that point, although clouds usually do go to the point. And now we can do a quick little gradation in pen. We can try. Yep, just like that. And our clouds could be dark or they could be light. I'm going to go a little darker over here. I cannot get over how thirsty I am today. It's like I walked through the desert. Clouds. Okay. I, I did, um, if you go back to my live stream videos, there, there is, I have it hanging on the wall over there. It's, um, maybe I'll grab it. It's probably all dusty. <laughs> uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, I did do something on clouds and, and landscape stuff. So you might want to go back to the history uh, playlist of the live stream. So we're just going to have a little bit of cloud go in that perspective. So we can go a little bit more Rembrandt with curved. I don't want it to be too much. I want to keep it somewhat simple. Okay, now let's make the distant mountains a little bit more solid. I, I can't believe I'm going to get another drink of water. Um, are the clouds okay so let me read this from ace moises welcome shine girl can you please out yeah um yeah absolutely go go shine girl check out the past um live stream videos i'm thinking about too many things at once i just had a brain freeze richard Breyer writes i read a chapter a night then listen to the same chapter over at coffee in the morning nice now, some clouds, yes, you can make them go to your vanishing point. Absolutely. You know, some t it depends on the sky, and, but I've seen that happen. Like, I've been, like, in an open field situation looking out at, at clouds, and they're all coming down. It depends. It, 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 it really does depend. Yeah, it is good for your health. Absolutely. I need to do more of that. Inking with a nib. Oh, God, you're bringing Magdalena. Magdalena. <laughs> Magdalena, you're bringing me back to high school with that. I still have some of the drawings that I did when I was working on my portfolio. I got to get rid of this beard. You drink something and your beard's wet. Um, I, I've got to um, look for some of those drawings that I did when I was working on my portfolio to get into college, I did so many pen and ink drawings with a nib and uh, used to sit there for hours and do them and just do all these little details. And it was stippling and it was cross hatching and it was so much fun. I I'm going to be more aggressive with this one. I'm going to 
try to get rid of more white paper. And hopefully this will create more of a foreground. <laughs> High school was a very long time ago, Magdalena. But I, I'll never forget, like I drew this scene. It was a castle with all the stone and it was so much fun. I did so many pen and ink drawings. That was a long time ago. So see what I'm doing here um, with the pen strokes? I'm dying to break out some pan pastel and just work on top of these with a brush and make them very painterly. I'll probably smudge the ink. It would be really fun. Uh, Truffles is snoring. So we're building up. It's a very slow process. So now I'm going to add a value. Let's add a value here with straight up and down pen strokes. A little bit more. Let's just make in that foreground ground a little bit more solid. And we're adding sound effects. I like that better already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to do some grooming. Okay, Shine Girl, gotcha. Here's what I would not do. Let me just grab a little sheet of paper here with the clouds. So um, let me kick that. So, so if you have like a little image, one of the worst things, ground. Okay, so worst things in my opinion. Okay, there, rules are meant to be broken, so take this lightly. Horizon line right in the middle of the image. Okay, it's very safe, and if you want a safe, quiet scene, that's doable. But these types of clouds where... They're all separated, and they're all equal. I don't like that style, okay? I like clouds to go into perspective. So if we were going to do that same scene over here, okay, and we put our horizon line a little bit lower, you can do those big, white, poofy clouds. That's a technical term. But make them go into perspective. And when clouds get closer to the horizon line, they get smaller and they get a little bit more horizontal. So you can do it where, yes, those big poofy clouds are going to the vanishing point. It's just not going to be equally spaced like this. This just looks really fake and you don't want to do your clouds like that. So even over here, I could uh, have like a little bit more overlap. And then the concept is bigger in the foreground, smaller in the background. So this is just, there is no foreground background. Everything's the same. Okay, and uh, you don't want to do that. That that is boring. Uh, you know, the thing with all of this art stuff is that I'm a big believer in doing things on purpose, not so much by accident. Okay, let's add a little bit more darkness here. I think what I'm going to do is just have some fun. Okay, because it's a live stream, and I kind of let me just reach over. And we're going to make a mess. So uh, Craig bought me these, and I never use them. I've only used the black, and they're pan pastels with this like little tool that I've destroyed. Okay, I've tried the blue, and then I've tried the dark. So I just want to have a little bit of fun here. Okay, so we're going to use the black, and I'm going to use it in a very, very minimal way. So we're going all mixed media here. I, I always work with my coal erase, but today we're going to have a little bit of fun. So I want to take just a little bit of that pan pastel, put it on this brush or this foam applicator. Okay, let's put this over here. But before we do anything, let me give it a little test. So it's good to do a little bit of a test first. So there's, oh, there's a lot on there. I'm glad I did that test. So let's take some of it off. Awesome. Okay, let's put a little bit of it back on. Good. I'm so happy I just dusted my office for two days. And let's add some value. So this is really warm. 
Okay, so a less is best right now. We're not going too crazy with this. So you see what happens when we immediately add solid value and we get rid of the white paper, what that does? It's pretty awesome. So now I barely have, so we can soften that background edge. Soft edges go back. Landscapes are so much more fun. I, I mean, drawing the figure, if you look behind me on my walls, it's all figure. Figure is my favorite thing um, in the world. But when you don't do figure drawing every day, it's hard to just jump into it after like a week off, okay? Uh, so landscapes are just so much more fun <laughs> when you have not been drawn. So let's take a little bit more of this on the, let me get a little aggressive here a little bit more. Okay, now let's do this. Let's make this bush really dark. Good. And now let's make our ground dark once again. This is so much fun, my God. And a little bit of the mid-ground. Our mountain soft. Soft-edged. Now it's going to come the test. Can I draw on top of this with my pen? So let's have a gradation in the sky. Very light pressure. So I'm going to be teaching a perspective class this semester at the School of Visual Arts starting on the Thursday the 13th maybe and uh, and we're going to be doing some storyboarding in there and this is going to be a technique that I'm really going to teach so with this one I'm, I'm going to keep I, I'm going to keep the sky light on purpose I'm going to make my midground a value darker and now I want to get a little bit more pan pastel so I want to make that mountain back over there just a little bit more solid, a little darker, softer, cool. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more. So this is a great way uh, traditionally to just have some fun doing storyboarding, okay? Uh, Beto from Brazil, welcome. Yeah, the tone brings it to life. Can we uh, make it with it? Yeah, you can do this with regular graphite pencil. It doesn't need to be the pan pastel. This is just like so easy to do. Can uh, Okay, could you tell me what is the vanishing point? Yes, I will. Okay, I'll talk about that next. We'll get a little bit more technical with the perspective. Um, Lenka. Thank you, Lenka, for joining. Uh, let me just add a little bit more value over here, and then we're going to talk about um, that horizon line, why and how come, and all of that. Okay, cool. Now, um, your horizon line is where your eyes are. The height of your head so if I'm going to find my horizon line in my studio, I have to figure out where are my eyes. And if I'm looking across at something on the wall, um, all of the lines of my uh, floor, the oak floor, would go up to the vanishing point where my head is. Okay, So that's number one. Your horizon line is where your eyes are. So some people call it the horizon line, um, and some people call it the eye level line. It's both. The vanishing point is where you are placed in that scene, okay? So I'm gonna do this with pencil because I wanna save these two little guys. So if this is me, this is where my head is. That's my head and this is my body. Okay, I'm gonna make myself skinny. Okay, so I, I, I'm probably even taller than that. So that's where my head is, that's my body, that's my eyes. This one, much lower, I could be sitting down in the field. And so uh, this one, I'm really low. I'm most definitely sitting down in this tall field over here. And I'm just, that's where my head is. It's right where the vanishing point is. So my head would be right here. And that's where my eyes are, okay? Now, 
whether or not you're going to decide to do one point or two point perspective, that's a story for another day. Um, well, it's an easy story to tell. Uh, now, your drawing pad, I don't have a drawing pad. Let's say here's my drawing pad. And this is the front of my drawing pad, okay? If I'm going to draw something and decide it's one point, whatever I am drawing, a box, a window, a room, if what I am drawing is parallel with this pad, my sketchbook or my pad, I'm going to do it in one point. If what, I'm, what I am drawing, a wall or a corner of my bedroom or a corner of my den or my television set or you know the coffee shop, if what I am drawing is not parallel with my pad, it's going to be two-point perspective, okay? So that, that's my, those are three extremely important rules for perspective drawing, okay? Number one, where are your eyes? Are you standing or, or are you sitting? That's where your horizon line is. Your vanishing point is where your head is, or the vanishing point is where the camera lens is. If you're using photo reference and you're trying to figure out where is the horizon line, where's the vanishing point, that's where the camera was, okay? I do have um, a whole begin here step-by-step -step course in the members area of drawingtutorialsonline.com. It's an oil painting begin here step-by-step -step course. I oil painted for well over 25 years. I don't oil paint anymore, although I did an oil painting portrait tutorial last summer. Uh, so yeah, so it, I have that on the website, absolutely. It's not as much as the drawing content, but it's there. And uh, I, yeah, I've got a lot to say on, on painting because I've done it pretty much my whole life. Um, what makes an interesting background? Uh, it's different for everybody. You know, honestly, uh, some people love busy urban scenes with graffiti on texturized brick wall. Uh, some people like open fields with big clouds and tall grass. So uh, what, what makes uh, a background interesting for me is, uh, you know, the topic. So this is landscape. I, I like big open spaces versus, say, city scenes. Uh, I, I love uh, interior spaces. So l let's get away from the landscape for a second. Let's say uh, an interior drawing that you're doing, like an interior space like my office over here. I love looking at uh, perspective drawings of uh, interior spaces because it shows me the personality of, of the person's space, what they have in the space. So maybe it's like uh, a superhero type background and they have all these weapons in the background and they're all on display. So more detail, more weapons, more fun stuff to look at. That makes it interesting. So it, number one, it starts with the topic of the scene. Uh, does that interest you? And then the things in that scene, what does that tell you about that space? Okay. So let me just look at some of these comments coming in. Your drawings are as beautiful as you move forward. Good luck to you. Uh, appreciate that pencil drawing studio. Sabi, the, uh, the class I'm in is going to start doing interior design soon. Yep. Yep, perspective, absolutely. You know, when I do the perspective class at the School of Visual Arts um, via Zoom, I'm definitely going to uh, have some more perspective stuff on DTO as well. Yeah. Welcome, Eduardo. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little swig of water here. Welcome, Ash. Alex Royal Arts, hello. Okay, now what can we do to make this a little bit more exciting? L let's just for fun, let's uh, experiment with Ooh, this is gum, really gummy right now with the pen over the pan pastel. It's probably going to gum up my pen. But we're going to push through it and just experiment and have some fun here with us. Yeah, the elements in the scene play a big role. It's... Uh, so think about this, like I just, I watched a, a video uh, last night on YouTube 
from this doctor slash chiropractor guy um, that showed these exercises for your neck, okay? Uh, how to avoid like the forward head tilt thing. And his office was like a minimalistic design. Like there was nothing in his office. It was like really beautiful pictures uh, of the spine on the wall, but it was minimal. His desk had nothing on it but a computer. And it, I, I, I like that. I, I, I like seeing people's spaces. And then I looked at another video uh, of something completely different. And um, there was stuff everywhere. And, and I like that too. So yeah, the things in the scene make it interesting because it gives it personality. Um, right now, these are tiny little uh, storyboard scenes. This is four inches by um, two and a quarter. So I'm really just drawing with my hands. I'm not moving my arm at all. Um, this is a different type of drawing than, say, gesture drawing. Now, what else can we do? Let's add a little bit more of a mid-ground. Let's add some slopiness. I got to be careful now that I don't create too much contrast in the background. Just some sloping lines. That's a little too dark for me back over there because the pen is starting to act weird. It's a little clogged now. Yeah, that is a salt lamp. I, uh, my, I said, I need to jazz up my background. And so my wife's like, here, take this. I, I gave it to uh, Isabella, our daughter, last year, and she used it once. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll take that. Um, my son has like a cool colored lamp in his room because he's on the computer 24 hours a day with his friends. And so I'm like, I need a little colored lamp back over there. Just, yeah, so it's not such a boring off-white wall. Uh charcoal not so much neil just because it's really dusty and i have a lot of expensive camera equipment computer equipment i, I just don't want to have a lot of dust in here i'm more of like a cola race pencil guy um so let, let's do a little bit but charcoal for me if i was a real artist's artist and i had a studio with no expensive camera equipment and computer stuff yeah, charcoal is awesome, but my philosophy for charcoal is if you're going to work big, it's really appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate for me, at least. I can only speak for myself, working small. Uh, charcoal for me is a medium that is something that you use when you work big. When I say big, I'm talking like three feet by four feet, that type of size. I'm trying to think of what else I can do to these to make them more interesting. five point perspective god i keep it simple okay i keep it simple for me it's one point two point or three point um three point looking up three point looking down i i, I think everything can be accomplished with those three points i mean yeah there are other points if you have like a staircase going up there's the way that the steps go up to a different point up in the sky but for me, I try to accomplish everything with those three points. I'm going to uh, go a little bit more aggressive with this, with the pen. Just let's see what happens when we layer. I'm getting much more stylized now. So uh, just to answer your question, I'm just moving my hand. I'm not moving my arm. Great way to do a storyboard. If you like traditional media instead of digital yeah it's um i wish i would have approached prismacolor many many years ago to ask them uh to be a, a sponsor because i've sold more color raised pencils than <laughs> probably any of their sales reps um between my classes at the school of visual arts and members of drawing tutorials online.com all almost uh 90 percent of my video tutorials are done with that pencil Let's just add a little bit more texture here. And I think we're going to be done soon. These, I don't want to overwork these. So let's go a little bit crisper with the edge over here in front of that mountain. Because hard edges come forward, soft edges go back. It's very gummy with the pen. So if I'm going to use these pens with the um, pan pastel, 
uh, the pens are going to be dipo- disposable. So, because this is definitely gumming up the pen. That's really much, much darker on my video screen than in real life. I like anatomy too. If Juana, can I share my file for your study? Um, a couple people had sent me images via email to critique. I don't critique images in email. I just critique images um, in the critique gallery at my website. Uh, it just it becomes overwhelming. You're, if, if you start critiquing people's images in, in email, then that's all you do with your life is critique people's <laughs> images. Uh, it's too much. So I, I limit critiquing just to the critique gallery at my website. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's just phases. Uh, I, I mean, 19th century academic ateliers and methods. Uh, it's just... I guess it's the hot thing right now. Um, it, it's also the internet and, and, and Instagram. We just see more of it. Like when I was younger and there was no Instagram and no internet, it, it's just everybody was just doing their own thing. We used to call it kind of painting realistically, like our own little group in class, uh, fourth year of college, everyone was trying to paint like realistically uh, in terms of like realistic science fiction book covers and, and all that type of stuff. Right now, there's like this thing on Instagram and, and YouTube where everyone's doing this realism. And then you see all the colleges and all the online schools. So it, it, you just, I, I, I don't care about like trends and all that. I just like to do what, what I've done my whole life, which is I like to work in a realistic, semi-realistic sort of way. And it's my personal process and style that I've been doing my whole life. So my, my suggestion is if you like that, do it. Uh, it's, it's the Tillier traditional way of working is just very time consuming and it's something that you have to enjoy. I, I do enjoy that, although I'm doing more teaching as of late versus working on my own art. Uh, but yeah, it's just the hot thing right now. Yeah, we can, we could add white. We can use our eraser. I could break out. Um, my, a little eraser, where is it? I'll be with you in a moment. We can use a little white charcoal, but I, I kind of like it a little bit more moody. Okay. I, I like the moodiness. If, if we want, let's see, let's just see for fun with this white. It's just going to add a whole little flavor. We can have some negative space. Don't know if I like that. But it's fun. Just some different textures. I want to get rid of this white over here. Oh, yeah, the Internet, Wilson, has totally uh, influenced um, a, a, so many people. Like, everyone's getting better and better and better because of YouTube videos. Uh, you, you, you know, I didn't have this when I was younger. What, what did I have? I had school, which met, uh, you know, a couple days a week, college I'm talking about, and I had a library. There was no computer in my house. So what did I have at the library? Books on Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Maxfield Parish, a Wyeth. Like, so I really immersed myself in, in books, and I was limited with the books in the library. Uh, but the Internet's unlimited. You can go on Instagram and see some of the best of the best. And when you're surrounded by people that are better than you, you just get better. And everyone collectively is getting better. And I know this for a fact, uh, teaching 18-year-olds. I've been teaching uh, freshman students since I was uh, 1997. I started teaching in college. And um, the difference in, in uh, the talent is the same. It's the skill level is much higher now in 2021 versus... 2000 and uh, 1997 because of YouTube because so many young people are exposed to really great talent at a very very young age 
and they absorb it very quickly. And uh, some of the students in, in my class are doing really great work, uh, absolutely. And they're 18 years old. And I wasn't doing that type of work when I was 18, just for the simple fact I was not exposed to all these very, very talented people on YouTube. Yeah, this drawing's done. So there's pros and cons to it. If you're, if you're a confident human being and you're comfortable in your shoes and you don't get intimidated uh, by someone who's really good and you don't go to this place where you're like, oh, that person's so good, I'll never be that good. If you have a little bit of, a, of, of confidence, uh, you can say, yeah, that person's really good, and man, they're kicking my ass right now, but I'm going to be that good someday. Uh, just got to work uh, hard at it. Uh, but the internet really could uh, work the opposite way for people who are not that confident, where they throw in the towel because they get overwhelmed, uh, and they don't have good, a good teacher that's boosting their ego a little bit. I, I think that's a, a, the job of a teacher, is to give really, really good constructive criticism but not beat the student up. And a lot of teachers do that. I don't do that. Like I'm a little uh, more encouraging with my critiques. Like I'll point out technically what needs to be fixed, but I'll also be a little bit of a cheerleader. I think that's very, very important um, for teachers to do. And a lot of teachers don't like to cheerlead. It's just a big part of it because every artist, especially young and old, needs a little bit of cheerleading. Um, introductory drawing book. There, there isn't one book. It depends on what you want to learn. Uh, I, I like the basics. Uh, so I like Bridgman. Uh, God, I'm looking at my bookshelves now. Um, yeah, I, I, I learned by not so much an art book that said, okay, you do step A, step B, step C. I really just learned by studying drawings. Uh, so like I'd get a Rembrandt book out of the library and I would study the drawings and that's pretty much how I learn. Um, I, I, books are great and, and I love books and I have tons of them on my bookshelves, but I think nowadays it's just getting a good teacher and let them teach you via video and have some books that complement that. Okay. All right. What age did you know you wanted to uh, do art as a career? Uh, probably when I was uh, single digit, seven, eight, six, nine years old. Uh, absolutely. Okay, so I think we're going to grab truffs and we're going to call this one done. Uh, I like them and, and I don't like them. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive uh, with the pan pastel. It looks very dark on my video, but I want to make this just a little bit darker. I'm looking at my screen right now. I'm looking at it from far away. Let's go with perspective. A little bit more perspective. Yeah, these are just classic thumbnail sketches. Let me get a little bit more pan pastel. Yeah, I got to get troughs. Um, so the rest of my day will be writing courses for the School of Visual Arts. I got to get my courses live on their website. So let's let's recap this. Uh, let me get troughs very quickly here. One second. She's sleeping. She's out. You want to do a little bit with the white charcoal troughs? Let's give it a try here. Let's add, um, let's see, let's add a little bit of negative space in these trees. Troughs, come on, you got to get your head in the camera there. One second. One second. There's troughs. Okay, let's draw. What do you say? Get a little bit of negative space. A <laughs> little bit of negative space in there. Some white dots, troughs. 
Uh, we can't get your, your face on there. Daniel, I really do appreciate that. That was very kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned Bridgman. I'd like to know if you mainly studied his drawings or did you actually understand his text? So Daniel, what I used to do was I would get a Bridgman book and copy the drawings. Um, more, um, some, so how, how do we learn? We learn visually, we learn through listening, and we learn through doing. And uh, for me, with art, I tend to learn more visually than reading. Uh, like a lot of people will read art books. I don't really read art books. I, I just, um, I like pictures. Um, I, I, yeah, I like pictures. I, I like to look. So for, to answer your question specifically, I would um, most definitely just look at his drawings and, and copy them. So what I would do uh, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself for those of you who have watched the live streams before and been with me on DTO, is that uh, I would wake up in the morning before I was an illustrator. So graduating from college, working on becoming an illustrator, I would wake up, go to my studio, uh, draw for a, a, at least 20 minutes. And what exactly would I draw? I would draw out of um, you know the Bridgman book. I would just copy like, a page of hands. I would copy. There was another book that I had drawing lessons from the great masters by Robert Beverly Hale, but he's really pompous the way that he writes, and I don't like reading what he writes. Um, so I would just copy some of the old master drawings, and I can't tell you how much that helped me. I mean, I just I was a, a huge art nerd when I was younger. I just used to sit and and stare at at books and and analyze images, and that's pretty much how how I've learned um, reading. Yeah, sure. Uh, did I read some books? Absolutely. But the books, um, I, I don't like reading art books. I, I like reading other types of books. Like I mentioned earlier on in the live stream, I like reading more self-help type books, health books, stuff like that. Thank you, Sabi. I really do appreciate that. So the moral of the story of this live stream here today is be very aware of how you place your um, horizon line and what that does to your image. I like them both. Um, I like them both. The one on the bottom is a little bit more quiet. The one on the top has more motion to it. Okay. All right, let's see here. All right, everyone. I think we're going to call this live stream done. We're about at an hour. And uh, I want to thank you all and wish you all a happy new year. If you want to read more about me and what I offer online, just click on the show more uh, and definitely like the video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I'm going to be doing a live stream every Saturday. Uh, definitely subscribe so you can get notified when I do the live streams. Um, Organic Paul, cheers. Michael, uh, thank you for that. Phoenix, thank you. Colby, Scotus, Truffs, thank you. Appreciate that. Ace stat, statue, what's up? <laughs> yeah, Truffs will not sit still. Uh, right now, my life is very different than when I started doing art. So when I started doing art, um, it was my life and I was an art nerd. I would be drawing and painting all day, every day. I don't do that that much anymore. I don't know what this thing is with art teachers who hate anime. It's a multi-million dollar industry that, that allows artists to earn money. I don't understand. Like Even at the School of Visual Arts, so many teachers hate anime. I, I don't get it. Um, yep. Have a great week. Ileana, thank you so much for joining. Have a great new year. Thank you, Kat. Appreciate that. Tiffany, thank you. Aurora, thank you. I'll see you on Tuesday. Um, we have our male model again. Uh, he's really cool. Michael, thank you. Uh, Sorobai, thank you. Wa Wan, appreciate you joining. Helen, appreciate you joining. Uh, best to you, Richard. Ace, thank you. You have an awesome year. I hope I see you next week. Magdalena, my favorite name. Thank you. All right, everyone. You have a great day. I'm going to be in front of a computer. Wow, there's so many people here. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Marie, thank you. German, 
Ash, Moises, all kinds of Melvin. Yeah, I shouldn't be quiet. I'm just looking at all the names here. Wow. Yeah, you guys have a great New Year. Truffs, say goodbye to everyone. We'll see you next Saturday. And for those members of DTO, look for the Zoom link on Tuesday. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.